everyone, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel and thanks so much for tuning in. Today I'm going to be doing a quick review of the new, well, relatively new, Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. The brand sent me this, well actually three shades of this foundation, as well as the brush that they recommend you apply it with. So I just wanted to go through kind of my thoughts, shade matching my experience with it, and just let you know what I think, especially if you were considering it with the upcoming Sephora VIB sale. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, first off, I know, at least in the reviews that I watched, a lot of people were excited when this came out because they loved the stick foundation. And what's interesting is I actually did not like the stick foundation. I mean, it was beautiful, but it, it was too moisturizing, too hydrating. It broke up on my combo skin, like could not get it to last. So then when I heard those same people weren't as enthusiastic about the liquid foundation once they tried it because it was too drying, I thought this might actually be a foundation that can work for me because I feel like that's what didn't work for me with the stick foundation. So the three shades that I have our shell, which is the lightest, uh, then there is ivory, which is one up, and then the last one is nude. And like I said, I have three shades, but there are 32 in this whole collection, so pretty broad shade range. And what's interesting is when I first swatched these on my chin, I felt like ivory was going to be the match for me. Like it really looked like the true match, but this oxidizes a lot. And I know, I think that's something that a lot of people have said about this. It certainly happened for me too. I would go a shade down, maybe even two shades lighter than you think you might be because part of me almost thought I might even be nude and I was kind of close but certainly not after it oxidized. I mean it goes a shade maybe a shade and a half deeper on me anyway when it oxidized. So tip number one is to go a shade or two down, lighter than you think you might actually be in this collection. When applying this, they say, the first step is to hydrate, you don't need a primer, and that's pretty much how I wear all of my foundations. I'm not a fan of wearing a primer if I don't have to, and the primers that I do like happen to be a more lotion-y type texture, just because the slippery silicone type ones make me feel like my, my foundation's gonna fall off. So I rarely prime, and I found that whatever hydration steps I take do a good job at priming my skin for this foundation. foundation. Then they say to take half a pump uh, and dot it onto your face. Half a pump of this is not a whole lot. And so I was immediately skeptical about how, how full coverage this could actually be because they say it's supposed to be full coverage with a natural finish, 24 hour wear. And I just wasn't sure how far half a pump could really take us. And then they say to blend, again, they say to use their vanishing blending brush or if you're using a sponge to use it wet. Honestly though, I, I did use this to go in and apply it at first just to you know really try it by the book and make sure I'm doing everything right before I try my own sort of thing to see how that affects wear. I haven't noticed a difference between using their brush versus the Real Techniques buffing brush, which is my go-to for every day, or even something more dense like, you know, a flat top Kabuki. This one is from Zoeva. It's their 104 buffer. Anything that's like relic, pr like pretty dense, made for buffing, I feel like it's gonna do a good enough job with this foundation. So with the half pump dotted all over my face, I have to say I was pretty surprised at how much it covered. I hope you can see this in the demo, but I, I was just so shocked to see that when I was blending out that tiny Tiny, what felt like a tiny dot on my cheek, it was turning into this pretty full coverage patch on the side of my face. Now, I, every time I've used this, no matter what brush I use it with, I do still feel like I always have to go in with a smidge more even after that first initial pump, at least to get the kind of coverage I'm after. But the thing is, even after I use, you know, however much I'm ultimately gonna use, I still don't feel like it is completely full coverage. Um, I am dealing with like healing acne discoloration or just healing acne breakouts, and so, I, you know, some of it's like hyperpigmentation, some I just have like natural moles around my face, and none of those are covered up from this like they might be from something like a Marc Jacobs Remarkable Fluid Foundation. And while yes, you can totally build the Hourglass Vanish Liquid Foundation, I wouldn't say it's totally full coverage with the half pump they recommend. You definitely have to go in with more, uh, but I don't, I think it's pretty layerable. Like I don't think that if, as you do go in and layer and layer, build and build, that it gets cakey or too thick looking, like it still stays relatively natural looking. And even though it's that thicker texture, I don't notice it clinging to any of the dry patches on my face, which as someone with combo skin does tend to be right around here on my jaw. And just overall where I have texture like my chin and um, around the perimeter of my face. And the thing is, and this will totally vary depending upon how you like to wear your foundation, but what I have actually been liking lately is a foundation like this, which says it's more full coverage, but going a little bit lighter on it because I find my concealer does so much of the legwork now. And I think that can be said about a lot of concealers out there. 
they've just been getting to be a lot more full coverage. And so I'll find that if I use an ultra full coverage foundation, go in with an equally full coverage concealer, it just looks like I'm wearing way too much makeup. So I actually discovered this coincidentally when I went back to my Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation that if I go in with a little bit less of that than I normally would otherwise and then use, you know, the Tarte Shape Tape, the e.l.f. 16, 16 hour concealer, yeah, that's the one, or the L'Oreal Infallible, all of those are the same like rich full coverage concealers that when I use it in conjunction with a little bit of a lighter hand of a full coverage foundation like the Marc Jacobs or the Hourglass, it gives me the perfect natural but still very full coverage that I'm after from my face base. So I guess all that is to say I'm not mad that half a pump of this Hourglass Seamless Foundation doesn't build up to be, you know, super ultra duper full coverage because I feel like my concealer does a lot of that look work, but I think that could vary for everyone depending on how they like to wear their makeup. As far as wear time goes, I was pretty pleased with this. I have been wearing it pretty consistently for the past two, two and a half weeks every day, long hour days. I traveled with it, with it recently, so it did the the whole, you know, getting my skin super dry in an airplane, going to a colder climate, like it weathered all of that pretty well without, I mean, certainly not getting greasy, but without breaking up in my T-zone, without getting dry and patchy around my chin area. On me, I would say this is a pretty long wear foundation. Um, 24 hours since that's the claim. I, I don't know about that. I don't want to wear my foundation for 24 hours, but certainly long wear. <laughs> Overall, I have to say I actually really like this foundation. Um, certainly more than the stick foundation, obviously, but I do think your skin type is key. I don't know that the people that love the stick are going to love this and vice versa, just because I find this liquid to be, because it's on the thicker and kind of more matte satiny side of finishes, it's going to be better for someone with combo to oily skin. And I think that's why I like it so much compared to the other, well, specifically the stick foundation. <laughs> this also strikes me as a foundation that's going to be really good for me personally in the summer because it keeps that satin slash kind of matte finish without developing extra shine, which I definitely need in the warmer summer months with my combo skin. That I think will be a true test for this. So I'll keep you updated on that um, because if it can do that, I think it would be worth the pretty steep $56 price tag. That's probably the biggest con I think with this product is, I mean, not only that price tag, but you actually get less than one full fluid ounce in this, unlike pretty much every other liquid foundation out there where you get one. This is 0.84 for 56 bucks, which is just kind of hard. But like I said at the very beginning of this video, I wanted to get this out there in case you were considering it for the VIB sale at Ulta coming up because getting 15 or 20% off of this might make you more inclined to give it a try, especially if after everything you've heard about it today makes you think it's going to be a good match for your skin type. So I hope this review is helpful. I know it's one of probably a million out there at this point, but we all have different skin types and different makeup preferences. So hopefully this helped you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye, guys.